So let's pray our prayer for uh, the reading of Scripture in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Lord, who have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may wisely hear them, read them, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So chapter 17, the book of Proverbs, it says, Better a dry crust with quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. So that there are a number of Proverbs that say basically the same thing about that, that it's better just to, have, to be, you know, to be a, a sufficiency, to have a sufficiency rather than to have a surplus and, and pay a price with, with strife and, and discord and oppression and things like that. I thought it said butter. Butter? <laughs> butter and dry crust. And like butter and butter. Yeah. <laughs> and peace. Yes. I know what we're talking about. Yes, yeah. So. Better a peanut butter cracker. That's right. With love <laughs> than a, uh, a bag of candy cords with strife. A wise servant will rule over an unworthy son. So if there's a son that is, 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 is foolish or something like that, but the one servant who did, but, and that's good because they had the, they had the position of a pedagogos, a, uh, our word pedagogue comes from it. And that was the slave who was supposed to watch over the child. Often if you were wealthy, each, each child had his or her own, uh, which wasn't, which was, they were all, Owned by the the parents, but by the father, but uh, that was his responsibility. He'd go to school and stuff like that, and he was the one who was supposed to administer discipline rather than the teacher. The teacher was supposed to teach, mm. and then the pedagogue was supposed to make sure he was paying attention and all that, and do so much and all that. So he said, "It will share the inheritance of the children because the." Uh, uh, the gratitude of parents in the long run probably would be to the crucible for silver that you know what a crucible is mm -hmm. so it's uh, how you would melt melt the metal and it would separate you would separate you put it at a high temperature to separate the silver from the dross from that which was in silver. so uh, and the furnace for gold it's the same thing the, 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 the crucible for that but the tester of hearts is the Lord. So it's the Lord who really can separate the good from the bad in what we're saying. The evildoer gives heed to wicked lips, the liar to a mischievous tongue. So uh, they're, like, they're, they're like malicious gossip and they uh, are collected. Or they twist it, they do this themselves. So they'll twist it in order to uh, make things look bad for the, the victim of, of, the, of the malicious gossip. Whoever mocks the poor reviles their maker. What was that? So, uh, but whoever rejoices in their misfortune will not go unpunished. So that's that's the, the preferential option for the poor by God for in this thing. Children's children are the crown of the elderly. So they're grandchildren. And the glory of children is their parentage. So, you know, the, the parents who raised the child well. And so when you uh, know about grandchildren there. A bribe, you know, fine words fit a fool. How much more lying lips a noble. So there's ill fit. The thing. So the uh, one is supposed to be not just noble in position, noble in birth, but noble in, in, in character. A bribe seems a charm to its user. At every turn, it brings success. So that, so uh, it's just part of, uh, especially in, in their cultures, it was very, a very big thing. You knew you wouldn't get anywhere without a bribe. 
and often a big one, to uh, do that, and you would uh, expect, that was just expected. But condemned by scripture, that you're supposed to uh, do justice, not, uh, not uh, you know, payment. Truth, rather than uh, uh, flattering the patron. Whoever overlooks an offense fosters friendship, but whoever gossips about it separates friends. So it's not uh, helpful. A single reprimand does more for a discerning person than a hundred lashes for a fool. That would be, that, you know, uh, uh, a physical punishment was very common for every, just about anything, for people of lower station or, or younger age. <clears throat> The wicked pursue only rebellion, and a merciless messenger is sent against them. So the wicked pursue only rebellion. It's going to come back on them. Even if they gain power, they always have to watch their backs, because what they did in overthrowing the legitimate authority could happen easily to them. And sometimes it's a... A self-fulfilling prophecy because they become paranoid and then they alienate the people that they need. So you take Robespierre, for example, in the French Revolution. The incorruptible, you, know, you couldn't be bribed or all this stuff. And that, since he was a fanatic, it made it even worse. So, um, uh, but then they, in the reign of terror, they, they started getting closer and closer to uh, the inner circle, the people, so they said, we have to get rid of him. And that's what they ultimately did. He was shot, they tried to kill him and shot him in the jaw, but it didn't work. So they uh, dragged him off to his own guillotine and cut his head off. Mm-hmm. So that was that. So, and he, he brought it on himself. Face a beer robbed of her clubs, cubs, but never fools in their folly, because that's not a good idea to get in between a beer and her cubs. If you return evil for good, evil will not depart from your house. So that's, because again, you'll alienate everybody, and rightly so. The start of strife is like the opening of a dam. It just, you know, you can't be controlled once they do that, the, the dam cracks. Check a quarrel before it bursts forth. So do, do things when you, they're controllable. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, uh, uh, the problem before it, it just gets out of hand. Whoever quits the wicked, whoever condemns the just, both are an abomination to the Lord. Of what use is money in the hands of fools? when they have no heart to acquire wisdom, because they, will, they won't use their money wisely. A friend is a friend at all times, and a brother is born for the time of adversity. <coughs> so that's when a real friend shows himself when you present a need. There are a number of proverbs about that, about you know, a person who's your friend when everything's going well, and you could, but once you know, uh, adversity strikes, they they distance themselves. It's the false friends. Those without sense give their hands a pledge, becoming surety for their neighbors, which they're always warned against so doing that, because then you will lose out. Those who love an offense love a fight, and those who build their gate high court disaster. So what's about this? building your gate high here. Uh, so that would be, uh, I can look that up here, see what that means. Mm-hmm.
builds a high gate, probably a figure of speech for hearty talk. Petach could mean the opening of the mouth. Open mouth, insert foot. The perverse in heart come to no good. And the double-tongued, that means people who say one thing and then they say the opposite, they're they're not reliable, fall into trouble because no one will trust them. Whoever conceives a fool has grief. The father of a numbskull, I thought there was a bee in numbskull, (laughs) has no joy. So that so the, again the the portion of instruction of the, the children. A joyful heart is the health of the body, but a depressed spirit dries up the bones. So even if you're physically healthy, if you're not emotionally healthy, and all this stuff, and you and you uh, that it just sucks everything away. But uh, pursuing cheerfulness often lifts you up, even physically. Not no, literally up in the air. So, mm-hmm. like, with all due respect to Saint Joseph of Cupertino, who uh, elevate, who levitated. A guilty person takes out a bribe, takes a bribe out of his pocket, thus perverting the course of justice. So, uh, uh, coming into that, on the countenance of a discerning person is wisdom. But the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. So he's not going to pay attention to to what's important. A a foolish son is a vexation to his father. So then there's the parallel here, the father and the mother. And bitter sorrow to her who bore him. It is wrong to find an innocent person, but beyond reason to scourge nobles, because they'll get back, basically. Um, those who spare their words are truly intel- knowledgeable, and those who are discreet are intelligent. As, as Abraham Lincoln said, uh, I would uh, prefer to be remain silent and be thought a fool than to open my mouth and remove all doubt. Mm-hmm. Even fools keep silent, and are considered wise. If they keep their lips closed, intelligent. So that's it. So that's chapter 17, so we'll stop there. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Get yourself to bed. I will. I'm going to go right go to sleep. Thank you. Might as well stop this. Bye now.